Good morning, everyone. So welcome here to Ecuador, to what was once the cloud forest and is now rapidly being cleared of its trees, deforested. So here we have a clear line between the green and the brown. We have a field that has not yet been herbicided and we have a field that has been herbicided. What I want to do is I want to give you a very sort of like clear level-headed explanation, uh, non-emotional about what is right or wrong or good or bad about the effects of long-term herbicide use on land. Okay, so um, just for starters, just so you guys know, I really try to be a, I'm a very pragmatic person and a very fair-minded and uh, I really understand the, the plight of a lot of farmers who use herbicides and fall into the cycle of using herbicides, fungicides, and chemical fertilizers. Um, I understand the need for crop productivity, uh, all of this stuff, getting your stuff to the market, but I wanna talk about the long-term effects and how it can actually be less profitable and less productive over the long term to keep using uh, herbicides. So here's what happens, okay? So as you can see here, we have a very uh, poor, you can see the line of delineation here between the topsoil and the clay. Here in the cloud forest, we only have about uh, three to four, maybe three inches of topsoil at most, and then we get to the clay. So what happens is when you herbicide, you essentially kill off the vegetation, yeah? Which here is just grass, it's pasture grass, which isn't really the best thing anyway. Not here in the cloud forest. Uh, mixed grasslands, natural prairies are wonderful carbon sinks and really nice ecosystems. However, that's not what we have here because this was a forest and it was cleared. So this is an unnatural pasture. Now it's been made even more unnatural by using the herbicide, okay? So what happens is you kill off the vegetation. So now even the, the little roots of the grass, the mat that they form under the ground is dying. When soil hits this, or when soil, I'm sorry, when rain hits this and we are now in the rainy season, it is so hard. It is like un unimaginably hard rain. Every drop could practically fill a teacup. What happens is that it hits the ground so hard, it forms a muddy slurry that basically loosens up that little bit of a layer of topsoil and forms like a, basically a mudslide. Um, you can actually see the topsoil in a hard rain just washing over the ground and it ends up here on the road making mud and then it just continues to flow downwards wherever downwards is it'll end up in a river somewhere because of course water always seeks the lowest point and then it'll simply wash out to sea. So because of the lack of a root structure in the soil because we're killing this grass um, now we have less topsoil to start with. Then they're going to probably plant something here. I imagine that's why they've herbicided it. Maybe cacao, maybe corn, bananas, I don't know, but I'm sure they're going to plant. Now, uh, some permaculturists, including experts like David Holgren, who I highly respect, they say it's okay to do like a one and done, that if you're starting with a locked up landscape, like a grassy pasture, maybe herbicide it once once, one and done, because you're starting with such a hostile landscape, especially when you've got spreading grass here like we have in the subtropics that will kill saplings. It'll strangle saplings, there's vines in there. It's, it's really um, very difficult to plant in a grassland here, not a grassland, but an artificial grassland here in the subtropics. So people like David Holgren, they, they strike a compromise and they say, okay, so we're gonna herbicide once come in and plant our trees, and then from then on, we're gonna take care of them by hand and organically. Okay, now, if you continue, which, you know, you might have opinions about that, you might, uh, purists never get anywhere in this world, so, you know, whatever with your opinions, okay? If you're very, like, staunch, oh, herbicides are bad, they're evil. Nothing is evil, okay? Everything has a use value, and it just depends on how you're using something that really matters, and really, like, what is the effect? Pragmatically, overall, what are the effects without having these emotional attachments to what is good and what is bad? The effect of repeated herbicide use is that you continue to kill the life in the soil. So in this soil that I'm now touching, there are millions of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, 
Let's not get all emotional about fungi. Oh my God, I love mycelia. Okay, whatever, guys, okay? Let's not get emotional about it. You've got bacteria, fungi, nematodes, all sorts of life forms here. It's a, it's a universe inside this soil. This is what digests organic matter that falls on the soil. Like here's an orchidea that's dying. You can see this leaf, it's starting to decay. So as this leaf is hitting the soil, the life that should be in the soil is going to digest this. Nothing decomposes in nature, okay? Decomposition, well, it decomposes, but you need to understand decomposition is a process of digestion, not decay. Things don't just rot down. They need to be eaten by things. So the microbes in the soil eat the leaf and turn it into humus. Humus is what helps soil retain moisture, retain nutrients, and also helps to aerate the soil so it's not compacted, okay? When you kill off these life forms over and over and over again repeatedly, there's nothing there to digest organic matter so you don't get humus. The organic matter of the content of the soil therefore falls, okay? It decreases. The soil becomes more tight. It becomes less aerated. It becomes more compacted and it becomes more difficult for whatever you are planting in your soil, whether they be trees or a crop or a grain crop or whatever, to get at the nutrients. So now your soil can't get at the new, now your plants can't get at the nutrients in the soil because they're not being digested. And of course, a lot of those water soluble nutrients are being washed out by hard, heavy rains like the nitrogen. So now what do you have to do? put chemical fertilizer on the soil, right? You have no choice. You've got to put that NPK bagged up stuff in the soil to feed the plants. Now what happens is, now there's a lot of, even orga a lot of organic farmers and, and scientists will say, a lot of plant, plants can access inorganic fertilizers. It's not a big deal. Fertilizers don't have to be organic. This might be true. But what happens is that when you put this NPK bagged up stuff on the soil that's petroleum based, it doesn't leach out. It doesn't feed the soil in a slow, even way, the way an organic fertilizer or a compost would. And when I say an organic fertilizer, I mean like um, manure that's mixed up with wood chips, clippings, uh, leaf fall, things like that, okay? So now what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a big bloom possibly of the nitrogen will go first because that's the most water soluble and the plants get a huge boost of nitrogen and they turn bright, bright green and they look amazing. But what's happening in your soil is you've got this big imbalance now of nitrogen and the other nutrients, the potassium, the phosphorus, the magnesium, the calcium, etc. You've got a big imbalance. And like when you've got a big imbalance in your body, like if you take a big fat B vitamin, right? Your urine turns yellow, okay? Because you can't absorb all of that at one time. So your body has to flush it out. Same thing. So the, the soil is trying to flush this out. And what you end up with is a lot of one type of microbe blooming in the soil to eat up that excess nutrient. That single, that microbe might not be friendly to your plants. It might be a virulent type of fungus. Not all fungi are wonderful people. Some of them really can do a job on your plants, let me tell you. Okay, so now you end up with a virulent fungi that attacks your plants, especially if you have something like cacao or banana, and can literally wipe out your whole crop. So now what do you need to call in? What are you calling in now, people? Ah, oh, the fungicides, right, okay. So by a simple repeated application of herbicides, simply what you think is making your life easier, you kill off the life forms in the soil, organic matter can no longer be digested into humus, you have to add chemical fertilizers. Chemical fertilizers cause imbalances in the soil that can cause fungal blooms, bacterial blooms, micro blooms that aren't very good for your plants, that may or may not be good for the plants, and usually they're not if they're caused by an imbalance, and can cause virulent fungi, mildews, monesias, terrible things like this that can wipe out entire crops, and then you need to call in the big bad fungicides. So we've created a cycle, a horrible, vicious cycle, okay? And once the farmer is on it, it's very, 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 very hard to get off, okay? I will tell you how you can get off the cycle in another video.
but for now I think that's enough. Okay guys, 10 minutes on a very clear explanation of why herbicides are not effective in the long term.